Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel and today we're going to be looking at some insulation because we suspect that this is a poorly insulated eaves cupboard. In fact, it isn't even an eaves cupboard because they didn't put an access door in there. We're going to try and rectify that as well. And just for symmetry, we're going to put the access door in the middle of the wall. The whole thing is a complete hodgepodge. So yeah, there's, there's insulation missing for sure, but look at this timber work. I can't understand what was going on there. I mean, that's not been done by a carpenter. <sighs> Incredible. Looks like it's been done by a plumber. <laughs> Forget about it. Looks like a bit of old pallet, basically. Mm. I'm all for recycling, but this is a new build. I'm going in now. I might be some time. What we got here is um, two inches of insulation in some parts, we've got four inches in others, we've got bits missing and we've got uninsulated pipes. There's a lot to think about here. Some of the PIR board has been cut in with big gaps around it. I think what we're going to do at this stage is think about whether we can use some multifoil in here. Some... So I'm going to give the technical guys a superfoil a ring and see what they suggest we do because I don't want to be adding more fiberglass in here. Out on top of this, it's just all a bit of a mess. And if we can find an easy, quick way of doing it, I'd prefer to do that. So I think it's fair to say that this is one of the most difficult loft insulation jobs I've tackled. Probably the reason why it hasn't been done that well in the first place is because it is difficult to get all the insulation in and make it continuous. You can do bits and you can do a great job on bits, but to get a kind of seamless insulation going all the way down to the eaves, to the wall plate, if you like, is, is tricky. Superfoil, I've suggested that we just line the sloping ceiling with superfoil, which would be a, a great idea. And then we could treat everything else inside the eaves cupboards as heated space in other words it's within the heated envelope of the house that's okay except for the fact that if we line all that sloping ceiling the rafters if you like they didn't know i didn't tell them that actually there's no breather membrane there so we've got the old-fashioned sarking felt which is the bitumen felt so there's no actual ventilation from the eaves to the ridge so if we go putting insulation on that underside, there's going to be a cold side to it and that won't have any ventilation. So we could get condensation issues in the, in the future. The reason this is so dry at the moment is because there's some whacking great gaps in there where they've just not, not finished the brickwork to the top and they haven't put the insulation in. So that's done a great job. You can feel it straight away that it is very, very drafty in there. And that, that would be one of the reasons why it's cold. Added to the fact you've only got 50 mil insulation. In some places you've got no insulation. Added to the fact that around the PIR, there are gaps all the way around that. So I am scratching my head. I, you know, To be honest, I am scratching my head because although we want to conserve as much heat as we can here, we don't want to cause any trouble with condensation. So I think the answer to this is to do a hybrid approach which uses the superfoil and also uses the existing fiberglass mineral wall if you like insulation so we can repair that we can improve that in places so what i'm going to do is i'm going to line all this wall here with the superfoil all the way along so that would be getting all those timbers will then be within the warm space of the, the house that'll be fine that'll stop some of that cold bridging which is 
basically coming across all these uninsulated areas here, we might be able to do something with some of it, but we've got to leave that ventilation in place. So that's enough talking, let's uh, crack on with the job. As it cuts here. That was. Oh, these are lovely. This is this is the ones. You get yourself a pair of sort of industrial. Now you might wonder why I've drawn that line and I'm cutting outside of it. It's because I just want a little bit to lap up the edge, which I'm going to staple on. It's amazingly tough. This stuff. You may wonder why I'm looks so at home with these. It's because my grandfather was a tailor. And my other grandfather was a tailor's dummy. You know this tape, it's come on in leaps and bounds. It used to be a kind of silver foil paper that just tore all over the place. But this stuff seems to have a fabric and uh, it really is tough. The only trouble is, it's still an absolute pig to get started on that. There must be a quick and easy way of doing this that I have yet to discover. Okay, right. <laughs> I've done easier jobs. But insulation is always one of those jobs a lot of people run away from, which is why this was done so badly. Because what happens is people just kind of push it in and put the plasterboard up and forget about it. And nobody knows whether it's been done properly or not. And the problem is now is that the building inspectors want to see it. 
they want photographs of it being installed so you've got to make sure you do a good job now a lot of this PIR board that was already in there is cut very very badly it's just roughly cut probably the laborer did it and it's not been done with any kind of care although it's a good product the performance gap between what they get in the laboratory and what they actually get on site can be huge so you've got a piece of insulation which is poorly fitted and although you'll hear a lot of arguments about multifoils and superfoil and so on and about what it achieves and what it doesn't achieve in terms of u-value the thing is you can't always get the insulation into the building that you require now if you're doing something like a conversion or an extension or something like that because of the stringent requirements now for insulation it's become a major cost and a major headache for a lot of people building and designing it's well worth talking to superfoil and seeing if their technical department can find a solution for you because it may be that it's a mixture of two different types of insulation it may be that you can achieve the whole thing with superfoil the building inspectors will always look kindly on a job which is being carried out properly and that means taking care of the details taping those joints making sure it fits and not leaving all those little gaps around which can undo a lot of hard work so there are many different products within the Super 4 range designed for different requirements. So if you follow the links below, you can have a look at those products and try and work out what's best for you. But if you can't do that, just get in touch with our technical department because as I found out today, they are very, very good at solving problems. Now I've still got quite a lot of work to do in there. And before I put this nice eaves covered door in, I'm gonna carry on getting all those bits done. I've done the bulk of it, so it's not so bad as it was. It looked a bit daunting at first, but actually I was pleasantly surprised. I actually put this in a lot quicker than I thought. 